How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. Playing as a horde is a lot of fun. And while I want to do a longer playthrough for a horde, I'm waiting for the next patch to come out. So in the meantime, I thought I would make a quick guide on how to form Ching, which also gives us the achievement a Manchurian candidate. To form Ching, you need to own these provinces. You cannot be a subject nation, although being a tributary is fine, and you need to be Manchu. Now Manchu is not a starting country, so we will shift the gear back a bit and see how to optimally form Manchu first. From there, we will see how to take those provinces from Ming, who starts way stronger than any of the neighboring tribes, and form Cheng from there. To form Manchu, we need these three provinces. And the easiest nation to form Manchu is Zhanzhou. Zhanzhou? I'm going to butcher a lot of names here, so I apologize in advance. Zhanzhou is also historically the most accurate nation to form Manchu after they united the Georgian tribes. So that's what we are going to do as well. And by uniting the Georgian tribes, I mean we will kill them all. We will do this very methodically to make the wars quick and save as many admin points as we can as scoring all those provinces will be very costly. Set the national focus to military at start. Make your ruler into a general and raise host in the tribe state. I got lucky on my first try and got 6 shock generals, one of them with siege pips, which is ridiculous. Early shock modifiers are really important with hordes. So if you want the starting couple of wars to go smoothly, you can consider restarting until you get maybe a 3 or 4 shock general with a siege pip. Don't pick your rivals just yet. Sometimes your rivals will form an alliance with each other and we don't want that to happen here. We will set the rivals right before we attack. For now, let's also ally Korchan. This is just an insurance policy so Korea doesn't attack us while we are at war with the tribes. And we will offer to become a tributary to Ming so we can attack his tributaries without him interfering. On December 11th, rival Haishi and Yeren. Then embargo Yeren and declare on Haishi the same day. Chase their army down and stack wipe, then immediately carpet siege. This is important as Korchen will likely attack Haishi too and you don't want to give them any provinces. Once you have sieged down the provinces other than the capital Giren, take your army to Yeren border. Now declare or Yeren and try to chase down their army as well. They might have a small ally in war such as Ainu, but that's not going to make any difference. When the siege of Giren is done, take your siege stack to Yeren's capital now. Don't peace out Haishi just yet though. We need to have enough admin points to core Giren which is about 160 admin points. As soon as we get those admin points, piece them out and start coring Giren only. Keep sieging down Yeren and keep chasing their army. We are not going to piece them out until Giren is cored. The reason is that you get a mission to own Giren, which gives you claim all over Yeren. This means you will need less admin points for coring the new conquered land. Once Giren is cored, complete the mission and now you can piece out Yeren too. Get as close to 100% overextension as you can. Definitely take Hingin, which we need to form Manchu, and Urkin, which gives us a province next to Buryatia for fabricating claims, along with some eastern provinces here. At this point, we can ditch our alliance with Korchen. They have served their purpose, and we will need to unite them as well once the truce expires. Now start coring Hingin only. The reason we aren't coring any other provinces is that once we core Hingin, we can form Manchu. And forming Manchu will give us cores on all these provinces, so we don't even have to spend all those admin points. Then you can form Manchu. And just like that, we only have one province to core. It's only 1450 and we have already united two Jurgen tribes. Next step is to form Qing, for which we need those provinces from Ming which is a bit tricky, because at this point, you can't really take on Ming. Even though you have your awesome step cavalry with bonus shock damage and flat terrain, and your Manchu banner units, Ming's RB is just too big. The best way to defeat Ming this early is by triggering the unguarded nomadic frontier disaster. This disaster is unique to the Emperor of China, Ming at this point, and it can fire if a neighboring country has government formed step nomad, that's us, is not allied to or a subject of Ming, 
we are a tributary to Ming, which counts as subject in this case, does not have a truce with Ming, we don't have a truce, and has a total development of at least 300, which we don't have yet either. So let's first work on getting to 300 dev, which just means uniting more tribes. We still have our truce with Korchin, so let's free the people of Korea next, even though they aren't really tribes. Start by raising your banners to force limit. Korea doesn't have any allies this early in game, so this war is easy. Although most of their terrain is mountains, which isn't ideal for our step cavalry, we should still win all the battles. Siege them down and take as many provinces as you can. Maybe some money if you have a loan. Start coring them, but do not raise. If you have never played as Horde, they have a unique mechanic where you can raise a conquered province, which is not cored. This gives you free monarch points, which is really amazing, but it also decreases the province development. And we need to get to 300 dev fast, so we will refrain from raising for now and just core the newly united provinces of Korea. Now we can chill out for a little bit while the coring is underway. There might be some rebels, just raise autonomy or fight these rebels. They aren't a real issue at this point. When you're halfway done with coring, position your army and declare war on Korchin. This war will be super easy. Chase down their army and carpet siege. When you can, annex all of Korchin. This will take you about 300 development, so now you can happily raise provinces. Just make sure your dev stays about 300. Alternatively, you can also attack Buryatia, but in my game they were allied to Ming. Core all the provinces you have and lower your army maintenance. We are going to attack Ming as soon as we hit Military Tech 5. As soon as you get Military Tech 5, get ready for Ming. Raise your banners to force limit and position your army. You can also change national focus to admin now. If Oirat isn't a MIG tributary yet, or they don't have a truce with them, you can try to ally Oirat as they might join the war with Promise of Land. It's a small chance, but it's a nice distraction for Ming. Now cancel your tributary and declare on Ming immediately. We need to fight them with either a military tech advantage or even with military tech 5 on both sides. Because as soon as they hit tech level 6, their army is vastly superior to yours. This is because they are in the Chinese tech group which gets a new cavalry unit at tech 6, while as a nomad we don't get a cavalry unit until tech 10. So it's important to attack soon. You will have to play a bit passive in this war. What I do is have a siege stack in Shenyang fort with the rest of my army right next to it. Wait for Ming to attack the siege stack then reinforce with your army. The terrain is flat so you get plus 50% bonus to shock damage which is super strong this early. Just keep sieging it down slowly and do the same for Beijing which is also flat terrain. Ming might siege down few of your provinces in the meantime but that's fine. We can relieve them once we are done with Beijing. Make sure to engage enemy units only in flat terrain for that shock bonus damage. You will have enough war score at this point, but don't peace out yet. We have to wait till the unguarded nomadic frontier disaster fires. Peacing out before that will freeze the disaster timer as we'll have a truce with them, and you likely won't get another chance to fight Ming evenly as they will have tech level 6 next time. When the disaster fires, you will get a pop-up. You can also check this in the mandate screen. And now you can peace out Ming. Don't take the mandate though, that will be disastrous. Take some provinces and some money, because you might have some loans by now, then sit back and recover your manpower. At this point, you can form Ching, and if you just want to get the Manchurian Candidate achievement, you can, but if you're looking to play a longer game, I wouldn't recommend forming Ching just yet. The reason is when you form Ching, your government type changes to Not Step Nomad, which is required for the Ming disaster. The Frontier Disaster also gives minus 15% morale of armies along with minus 0.3 mandate per month and once the mandate drops below 50, there's a scale modifier to shock and fire damage received and goods produced, which at zero mandate is plus 50% shock and fire damage received and minus 50% goods produced, which is huge and realistically the only way to defeat Ming early. So we will be Manchu for now and keep our step nomad government while the mandate tanks to zero. While waiting for the truce to expire, it's a good time to get some tributaries of your own. Yeren and Ainu are good candidates, so is Baryatya. You can also take Mongolia as a subject from Oirat, then later feed Oirat to Mongolia when you get a chance. But don't let all that distract you from Ming, because you need to hit them again as soon as the truce expires. Second war is actually harder because Ming might tech up to level 6 by now, 
So even though they have some pretty bad modifiers from the event and low mandate, their army size is scary. Also playing as tribes, you might get some nasty events which tank your horde unity which means dealing with rebels of your own. You can buy some horde unity using military points from strengthening government, but use it sparingly. Second war against Ming is more of the same. I usually declare a conquest war rather than using mandate CB, as sieging a nearby province is easier than going in and taking their capital. Use the same strategy as before and try not to take engagements in non-flat terrain. This might be a longer war, but the idea is to keep draining Ming bit by bit as they deal with rebels and your army at the same time. Peace out with a couple of provinces and a whole lot of money as you will need it to embrace institutions soon if you haven't already yet. You should also be able to pick an idea group by now. I always like to start hordes with aristocratic for that overkill cavalry compatibility, but you can go humanist too as dealing with rebels in far corners of your empire is a pain. Third Ming war is where you break the camel's back. Ideally, you should wait till Ming is busy with another war as they usually attack someone for forcing tributary. The war strategy is still the same. It will be a long drawn out war and at the end of it, take more provinces this time as you have a lot of claims there and you can raise these provinces to get up to speed on tech too. You should form Qing once the mandate is tanking well below minus 0.3 per month. As once you form Qing, the disaster goes away and you don't want the mandate to start climbing back. When you reach this stage, it's GG for Ming. You can just sit back and watch the glorious Ming Plosion. Forming Qing will end the disaster and give Ming plus 20 mandate, which will start ticking down again. While your government type will change, and you will get new units and permanent claims on all of China. The game from here out is easy. Keep taking provinces from Ming, but don't take the mandate yet. You need a lot of tributaries before you take the mandate, or you will suffer the same fate as Ming. Or you can just not take the mandate at all and play the game without dealing with the Emperor of China mechanics. Either way, you are the strongest nation in your region in early 1500s and the game becomes rather easy from here on out. And that is how you form Manchu and Qing optimally. I really enjoy playing as a horde. The economy is terrible and the horde unity is a pain to manage. But you can just murder, I mean unite, everyone else which means in comparison, your economy won't look so bad and you will have an infinite supply of monarch points by raising provinces. So go ahead and enjoy the game as Horde Manchu or form King and take over China. Let me know in comments if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.